find us today in the snow in the middle of Radnor Forest in Mid Wales to find out whether that new Land Rover Discovery 4 or this even newer Toyota Land Cruiser is the better car to drive off-road. Now we know as well as you that people don't spend £40,000 on cars like this to go off-roading in them. But what they are buying into is the knowledge that even if they won't, their cars will. And so, without further ado, we should let battle commence. There is an old score to settle here. Land Rovers and Land Cruisers have been battling for decades for the hearts and minds of serious off-roading communities, all the way from the African jungle to the Australian bush. And in sales terms, it's Land Rover that keeps on coming off second best. But when the mud, or indeed snow, is axle deep and you're doing all you can to stop push coming to shove, which really is the greatest off-roader of them all? In theory, or if you like, on paper, the Land Rover really should have this test licked. We've been doing some digging around, looking up the off-road stats, and we can't find any at all in which the Land Cruiser is better than the Discovery. It doesn't matter whether you measure approach angles, departure angles, ramp over angles, wading depth, ground clearance, and every single measure, the Land Rover is at least as good as the Toyota, usually better. Then again, if you could prove the outcome of a test like this just with statistics, there wouldn't be much point coming out here at all. Just don't expect the Land Rover to have it all its own way. We're in the Land Cruiser now. From the moment you get through the door, you're aware that it has this rougher, tougher feel to it. That is a reason that many people won't even look at it. If you're coming out of a very sophisticated discovery into one of this, it might feel even quite agricultural by comparison. Others, however, will look at that and think, actually, that's the reason this thing is going to do 200,000 miles without any problems at all. Would you be confident about saying the same about the discovery? Possibly not. So what is the Land Cruiser like off-road? Well, unsurprisingly, it is extremely capable. You can get to a stage where you think, well, that's it, I'm stuck, I'm not going anywhere. But just let the car have a bit of time to figure it out. You'll sit there and you'll hear the electronics whirring away and you're not going anywhere, and then suddenly you'll get a bit of movement. And then you'll get a bit more, and then suddenly you're underway again. This is a car in which you never, ever give up. It's very, very impressive in that regard. These two may both be large seven-seat SUVs, but in fact, conceptually, they're incredibly different cars. Whereas Land Rover have gone down a very modern, sophisticated, advanced route with monocoque chassis, independent suspension, multi-cylinder engine, six-speed gearboxes, this Land Cruiser is a very, very simple car. It has body-on-frame chassis. That's the same technology that's been around since the days of the horse and cart. It's got a live rear axle. It's got a big, thumping four-cylinder engine. The gearbox only has five speeds in it. What that means is that the car is incredibly rugged. This stuff has all been proven time and time again. It's almost certainly never, ever going to go wrong. But there is, at the same time, a price to be paid in that it does feel so much less sophisticated and comfortable than the Land Rover. Off-road, this discovery is absolutely astonishing. It's not that it'll actually take you on these sorts of paths anywhere which the Toyota won't get you but it's the comfort and the ease that it brings while it takes you there, which is just amazing. You sit here and the ride is like that of a limousine when you're going over the most absurd terrain. It just makes your life so much easier. And with the terrain control it has down here, you can just select the right settings for the environment that you're in and the car won't quite do the rest for you, but it's pretty close. Now, Toyota do have a similar system, but it's not available on the Land Cruiser that we have here today. It also, you can get on a Land Cruiser, a cruise control that works at about a single mile per hour, which is a wonderful, wonderful device to have, but it happens not to be on this car. So with these cars here, the Land Rover may not be any more capable in this environment, but it's certainly an awful lot easier to drive. So which one is the better off-roader? Well, it's a remarkably close run thing. We've been in this forest for most of the day now, and not once did one of them go somewhere where the other wouldn't follow. If one got stuck, the other got stuck. I would say that the Toyota has a little more grip, but on the other hand, the Land Rover is the easier car to drive off-road. So I think we can say that, all in all, it's on as even. However, if you were to compare these two as to what they would like to drive on the road, there is no contest at all. It would be the discovery that wins every time.